Hey guys, this is the BC Playback, and I'm back with part four of my Dead Money playthrough. Almost. I'm just going to grab the remaining notable loot in this place, which includes ammunition vending code in here. That's for 308. It's pretty useful if you've got a sniper character or intend to use the automatic rifle. The Sierra Madre armor. I've mentioned that in previous episodes. Um, there's the steady vending machine code. I'm going to head downstairs and grab Grodnak the Barbarian comic. I went in the room in previous episode and missed it. So that's right in here, facing east on the floor. Maybe I'll tear it off your arm. Where are you on my neck? Swallowed his collar. Okay, so we've got to head to the medical district and find Christine now. Kill this one before they call others. Yeah, once you have the um, bear trap fist, yeah, that's the name, bear trap fist, it becomes a lot easier to defeat the ghost people, and it is as simple as just punching them when they're down. I realise at this point that I should probably put on my armour. It's worth searching these bins, they can contain all sorts of things. And um, as I found out later, a Braxo Clean is actually quite useful in this, as you can use it to poison your weapons. Yeah, you can use it to poison weapons. I forgot before. Yeah, that adds to unarmed, which is quite useful, especially considering I'm using the bear trap list. There we go. So yeah, this is the first time I've looked at one of the Sierra Madre dispensers. I haven't unlocked much for it yet, but it becomes extremely useful once you've visited all of the areas. Yeah. Um, 
when you're through the Mojave as well, you should collect those packs as you can return them for chips. So some more people going insane. I wonder if those are the ghost people. Or if the ghost people are the guests. And you might be first ghost. Something is It's very important once they're down to hit them or they will just get back up again and again. And heal. Just go around looting a couple Sierra Madre chips for a while now. It's quite important. And it's worth remembering in this fountain is a Sierra Madre playing card. So it takes me a while to find it. It's there, right next to the projector. Makes up the dead man's hand. setting of this DLC. It, I am disappointed that you can't return to it, but I'm guessing that's one of the things you have to sacrifice when you go for more story oriented DLCs, which I do like. The Villa's comm speakers have aged poorly, like the Madre, pre-war junk. The speakers emit a signal that'll shut off your caller if you stay too long. There are damaged speakers and shielded ones. The damaged ones you can destroy at range. Don't get close. You can't switch them off like a radio. Right, that's convenient. Um, in the medical district, there's loads of aid-based vending machine codes and some very rare armor. It's quite satisfying blowing those up. Just turning up the brightness, it's not very easy to see while I'm playing, so I can't imagine it would be that comfy on the eyes to watch either. Signposts obviously no use. gets in the way, but at least he proves that he can take a hit. Finished here. Uh, in the first place I would suggest just grabbing everything that makes itself available. Sometimes it's just best to run from the speakers. Right behind you. So shooting them or throwing weapons works. Although shooting them seems to alert the ghost people. And nine more pistols don't seem to do much. Now, if 
you're playing on hardcore mode, I suggest that when combat begins, you actually bother to do this. I generally don't because uh, I'm not, and if God goes down, then he does just get back up. If you're playing on hardcore mode, when a follower dies, you die. So if I were you, I would play the holotape of the old man. Sorry, Father Elia. Which will um will bring Dog out and make him much more efficient at combat. Also collect Cloud, which is you you need it to make Cloud Kiss, which is a very efficient poison. Because I'm me, I couldn't just go through the cloud, I have to go back and search. First of all, to see if I could sleep, stay alive. Obviously, you can't. Second of all, to check for loot. Unfortunately, dog gets in the way a lot when you're in the cloud. God gets in the way a lot when you're in the cloud. There's the clinic. Since I'm blind as a bat, I missed it the first time. Here we go. In here are several vending machine codes. Picking up an emitter signature. Watch for security holograms. Dangerous. Don't shoot them. Attacking them is useless. Security holograms are invulnerable to damage and deal quite a bit of it themselves. There's a Dean's stash, they're always worth grabbing. You want to check on the table, there should be a skill magazine. They're weightless and, you know, you can always use the skill boost. You also want to check the bins, sometimes they can have skill magazines and they almost always have Sierra Madre chips. Now that's the Stimpak vending machine code. That's one of the most, if not the most useful code in the game. Just want to check behind the door. Um, And here we have auto the end of the hall. Red light means they're shielded. Must be a way to shut them off somewhere else. Yeah, this is the operating room. There's some rare equipment in here. It looks like someone was experimenting. Although they were doing so after the collars went off. So you're going to want to check the terminal because one of these could be part of the Sierra Madre History Challenge. If you're interested in reading them, you can pause the first one. I think I actually read the second one, so you should be able to just pause that as well. I'm the Beast Playback. Thanks for watching. Next video coming up soon.